non-lawyer paid spokesperson. Attention Pradaxa users. If you are hospitalized for internal bleeding or if a loved one died from internal bleeding after taking Pradaxa, call right now. The FDA warns that using the blood thinner Pradaxa may cause serious, possibly fatal internal bleeding. Never stop taking medication before asking your doctor. But if you or a loved one was hospitalized for internal bleeding after taking Pradaxa, call our lawyers at 800-378-0624 for a free claim review. WYLN Hazelton. This is Topic A Live at 5 with 35 Weather. One full hour of today's up to the minute information and conversation, along with Northeastern Pennsylvania's most detailed and accurate weather. Topic A Live at 5 starts now. Good afternoon. It is 5 o'clock on this Friday afternoon. Time for the Friday on My Mind edition of Topic A here on uh, WYL. And, of course, if you're with us early on the week, you know that this is the final Friday on My Mind edition of uh, Topic A with uh, Dave Yonkai and me. At least for now and at least under this hour format, we may be back in another form. Uh, I talked about some of this earlier in the week, but uh, we'll give you a recap uh, later on if you're not sure uh, what's up here anyway. Dave will be joining me in about 15 minutes. We've got a ton of of things to talk about, as uh, we always do, uh, including the uh, story that uh, I talked about 24 hours ago right now, that uh, what was reported to be a shooting at uh, the White House and the Capitol building. And boy, by the time I got home last night and right around midnight, I'm looking online as to how the stories had changed. And, um, you know, I guess I have to take some of the culpability of this because I was relying on the larger media sources. Now, obviously, we don't have a bureau in Washington, D.C., but virtually everything turned out to be different. And now there are some serious questions being raised as to whether or not D.C. police should have shot and killed that woman. I'll be honest with you. I don't think they should have. I think they overreacted something awful. Uh, Anyway, we'll uh, talk about that in a few minutes and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, right now, let's just get to the headlines. We'll go outside in the Bedrock Gardens Outdoor Weather Center with Joe G. In a few minutes, let's get to the headlines. There was a, a bus accident, an accident involving a school bus on 1st and Locust Street on Hazleton's northwest side. These are some pictures that we have of the incident. That is a, a Ford Explorer, and uh, city police are saying that the driver of it failed to stop at the uh, stop sign at uh, First and Locust and hit that bus. That bus says Weatherly Area School District. And uh, not sure, however, that they actually were Weatherly Area School District students because, of course, Weatherly is not part of the Hazleton Area School District. And that part of the city, of course, they're all in HASD. In any case, it's four passengers on the uh, bus were taken to Hazleton General for further evaluation. Not sure how serious any of those injuries are, though I live not far from there, and uh, traffic there is generally pretty slow moving, so I don't know how serious they are. Remember we told you a while ago about that uh, fatal hit and run in Jenkins Township back on Mother's Day? Well, today the guy who was driving the car that uh, struck and killed 65-year-old Gene Darsky turned himself in. He is 36-year-old John Michael Kaniskis. And he's facing homicide by vehicle charges, fleeing from an accident, involuntary manslaughter, and uh, related counts. He's accused of hitting and killing 65-year-old Jean Darsky on uh, Mother's Day in front of her home on Westminster Road in Jenkins Township. This is a couple of miles south of Pittston. Uh, Darsky was uh, trying to remove a political flyer that had been attached to her mailbox at the time when she was hit. Her family had sought to have Kaniskis' assets frozen for a civil lawsuit. Kaniskis was arraigned this morning, or this afternoon actually, and then he declined to comment on any of the charges. Wilkes-Barre City Police have made another drug arrest. We talked about two of them last night. Well, there's a third one now. City Police arrested 47-year-old Lee Alexander Snyder of Hickory State. They were charged as he was selling heroin and cocaine from his house. Snyder was arrested uh, last night 
after police served a search warrant at his home and allegedly found large amounts of cocaine, heroin, and cash. He's in Luzerne County Prison on 60 thousand dollars bail fire just outside of pottsville today in mount carbon and it destroyed the fire station as well as the home next door uh it's technically called the mount carbon north Mannheim township fire company number one it's not far off route 61 and uh a fire to vacant home next to it started about 4 30 this morning uh, supposedly spread to an attached house and then to the fire station, uh, which included two garage bays and a social hall. Uh, firefighters were able to get the parked equipment out of the building before the fire damage, but were not able to prevent damage to the building. Uh, Mount Carbon is the smallest borough in the county. Got about 80 residents. Mayor Jeff Dunkel brought uh, international attention to the borough back in 19 or in uh, 2001 when he was elected mayor at the age of 18. Mentioned a Weatherly Area School District before the uh, school board says it has a shortage of teachers. Now, according to the teachers, classrooms are filling up and they need more. Barbara Sippler is the president of the Weatherly Area Education Association. That's the teachers union. Uh, she asked the uh, board uh, about hiring more, says last year's classes were at 15 students and they're now up to 25. She also says that uh, academic achievements are in jeopardy. The biggest problem areas, kindergarten, first grade, and sixth grade. Teachers always say that with smaller classes, they'll be able to accommodate students uh, who need uh, more time in one subject. Research, by the way, is mixed on that as to whether or not that's factual. There's some research that seems to support that contention. And uh, other research, particularly that done by a Dr. Eric Hanyashak at the University of Minnesota a while ago that said after you get beyond the third grade, the class side doesn't matter at all. There's no impact whatsoever on the quality of teaching. But in any case, that's uh, the Weatherly Area School District. Teachers there say they need more. Well, Hazelton City Police are once again investigating a copper theft. And once again, it is on the northwest side of town. This time, someplace on Alter Street. Uh, they're doing this all the time lately, saying the 600 block... But if you're familiar with Hazleton, you know there isn't a 600 block. There are five 600 blocks because the north-south streets all have 20 addresses per block, not 100. So this is somewhere between, what would it be, 5th and 11th Street. Um, somebody had uh, broken in and stolen copper pipe from the basement of that home. And the uh, city police are saying it happened sometime within the last 24 hours. This will be very close to the church that was very severely hit by copper thieves two weeks ago. It's going to be a block or two one way or the other from that. Uh, so if you know anything, heard anything, saw anything, city police 459-4940, or you can call Luzerne County 911. Well, Governor Tom Corbett made a, call, a comment today that has some people up in arms. He was on uh, Channel 21 WHP in Harrisburg, was asked about uh, same-sex marriage, and he said it is akin to a brother marrying his sister. A uh, firestorm ensued, and since then, Corbett has sort of apologized, saying he didn't mean to offend anybody. Church Street Station, the Hazleton Intermodal Facility, now has a patio, and we talked to HPT Director Ralph Sharp about it. We decided about three months, three and a half months ago, we decided we needed to utilize this space. So we came up with the idea to put in a little patio for the citizens of Hazleton and, and anybody in general. This is a patio we decided to uh, put in this alongside of this facility just for the citizens of Hazleton or anybody that's waiting for a bus. They can come and enjoy, relax, and just hang out if they want to here and just enjoy the day if it's a beautiful day. Let me add by saying Angelo's Restaurant customers can come grab a hoagie, sit at the tables. If people from downtown can do building, they want to come over, they can sit. Anybody can come and enjoy this facility. Now, I don't think we asked whether or not the uh, patio was available for wedding graduations and bar mitzvahs, but the city needs money, so it might be. Uh, and a research group says <laughs> the scranton wilkesbury Hazelton area ranks among the bottom third in the country for transportation quality. Our roads around here are a catastrophe. This isn't exactly big news if you drive around here, but uh, the area ranks 17th worst among 62 urban regions with populations between 250,000 and 500,000. And this organization 
says the average motorist in this area pays $539 a year in vehicle maintenance related to poor roads. And it says that 32% of the region's roads are in poor condition. And it kind of depends on where you are in this area, because if you're in Hazleton, the city of Hazleton, I suspect that number is much higher than that. Uh, if you're in Wilkes-Barre, there's emergency sewer repairs tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, pardon me, Tuesday, on uh, South Franklin Street, starting at uh, 8 o'clock. This is between Northampton and Market Street, right downtown, so more traffic problems in downtown Wilkes-Barre. Sorry, folks. And retail experts are expecting that the sluggish economy, which guys like Yonkai refuse to admit exists, uh, are cutting down what you may spend on Halloween. Karen Capa has more. Un uncertainty in the economy may be spooking Americans into curbing this fall's ghoulish celebrations. A survey from the National Retail Federation finds households expect to spend less on Halloween this year than they did last year. Just over $75, down from $79.82 in 2012. Total spending on the holiday is expected to reach $6.9 billion, down from $8 billion last year. And while one-third of shoppers got a September jump on purchasing candy corn and costumes. The majority of Halloween spending will take place between now and October 31st. 2.6 billion will be spent on costumes. That's 1.2 billion on adult costumes, just over 1 billion on children's, and 330 million on costumes for their pets. Nearly 2.1 billion will be spent on candy, and almost 2 billion dollars on spooky home decor. While Halloween may not be a big deal in some households, it can be a big deal for retailers. It's the last major event on the calendar before the crucial holiday season and often offers clues into how much shoppers will be willing to spend on holiday gifts. Is Halloween a holiday? I, I mean, like a real holiday? I, Karen referred to that as a holiday. I like that costume there. You can, you, you can dress up your dog like, uh, like Elvis Presley. I don't all right, quickly in sports, A-Rod filed a suit today. He accuses Major League Baseball and Commissioner Bud Sealing of a witch hunt. It seeks unspecified compensation. The Washington Nationals have asked the Yankees for permission to interview Joe Girardi. The Nats have an open manager's position. As you know, Davey Johnson retired. There is also some speculation that the Cincinnati Reds will do the same. That's because the Reds fired Dusty Baker as manager today. Once again, the Reds got to the playoffs but couldn't get past the first round. Angels first baseman Albert Pujols suing former New York, uh, San Francisco Giants and St. Louis Cardinals first baseman outfielder Jack Clark of accusing him of using steroids. Uh, Clark said on his former radio show in St. Louis that he was absolutely certain that uh, Pujols used steroids. So Pujols is asking for unspecified damages. The Cleveland Browns lost quarterback Brian Hoyer for the rest of the season with a torn ACL in that game against Buffalo last night. And uh, Condoleezza Rice, former Secretary of State, is on the College Football Playoff Selection Committee, helping to decide who makes the playoffs. Archie Manning is another one on there. In case you don't know it, Condi Rice is a huge and very knowledgeable football fan. When we come back, Dave Yonkai joins me. Hey, in the don't. meantime, let's go outside to the Bedrock Gardens Outdoor Weather Center with Joe G. Joe. Thank you very much, L.A. Definitely a very nice-looking afternoon and evening in store for all of our area. In fact, we have the sunshine, a, a few clouds here and there. But other than that, picture-perfect weather for October. And it's dry here in the backyard. It's not dry every location across our region. We'll be looking at the radar in a little bit. But all eyes are still focused on what is now Tropical Storm Karen down in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a look at the infrared satellite. And uh, you can see she's still uh, packing a punch. She has sustained winds of uh, 50 miles per hour with gusts up to 65 miles per hour. Indications are she's still going to interact with that front that I've been telling you about the last couple of days and has the potential of giving us some heavy rain as we start going into our Monday and as we go into part of our Tuesday. I will be talking about the complete seven-day forecast, including how Karen may be impacting our weather, coming up next.
Swing to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy October 18th at the Alice E. Wilsey Performing Arts Center at the Historic Castle in Hazleton. 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of Big Bad Voodoo Daddy's remarkable arrival onto the music scene. And today, the High Energy Nine Piece Ensemble continues to remind the world that it's still cool to swing big band style. Join the party. Shake and move to the groove October 18th. S.J. Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call S.J. Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. Come see for yourself. They have the freshest selection of meats, cheese, and produce. Baked goods made fresh on premises. They have an in-store butcher who is happy to accommodate your special orders. Be sure to stop in and check out their unadvertised specials. You'll find them throughout the store. See their flyer for weekly specials. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. This week at Heritage, their super hot deal of the week is their boneless and skinless chicken breast, only $1.79 a pound. For all your projects, large and small, Bedrock Gardens has it all. They are fully stocked and ready to fill your order. Rubber mulch and rubber curbing to match. Lots of color choices to pick from. Wall stone, natural stone, full pallets ready to go. Their bins are full with rich colored quality mulch that will look wonderful all season long. Finish off your fabulous outdoor space with their quality patio furniture and easy to assemble fire pits. Everything you need for your summer projects. Delivery available or just stop by and they will load you up. Bedrock Gardens, locally owned and operated, call today. WILN TV 35, first in live sports. Hi, I'm Ron Jaworski. For the best in local TV sports, watch WYLN TV 35. WYLN TV 35 has it covered. Hi, my name is Vince Papelli. I'm a former Philadelphia Eagle wide receiver and special teams guy. And for local sports coverage, I watch only WYLN 35. WYLN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. All right. We weren't sure where we were going here. Exactly. <laughs> well, what else is new? Yes. Uh, we're here 5-16 uh, on the uh, fri the final Friday on My Mind edition of uh, Topic A. Um, what's the matter? You. Yeah, we have to go to Mr. Garbatrick. Is it this our break here? Hi. Right, go ahead. Joe, you're up. <laughs> and Are you there? I'm here, but okay. you, you guys could have kept kept going. It's no, always that's enjoyable that's to hear uh, what you two have to say. Now, the weather is more important, Joe. This fantastic weather you've been giving us, thank you. Uh, well, you're, you're very welcome. You may not thank me on Monday, but that's, <laughs> that's besides the point. All right, so we talk about the weather. We talk about another uh, storm system that could impact our area by the early part of next week. But until then, hey, it's just spectacular to be outdoors. Uh, we have the uh, warm conditions, we have the dry conditions, and that you really can't get much better weather for this time of year, especially for October. But again, some changes are going to be taking place as we go into early next week. I'll be letting you know about those changes in just a little bit. But uh, a nice looking day today. Now, there was a couple of showers and a few sprinkles out there here and there. Uh, you can see them on radar, every location not seeing any of the rain but as i told you yesterday there was the uh, the chance of seeing maybe a, a shower or thunderstorm throughout the afternoon hours and they've been around but again most areas really not really seeing uh, really anything that's the good news and where there have been a shower or storm it's been short-lived and didn't amount to a whole lot so if you happen to be traveling the next couple of hours overlooking the cunningham valley things looking pretty nice out there and for traveling uh, things do look pretty nice across all of our area. Harry's you pull it out of Parts Almanac page for the day, 78 and 63. It's above the average high and low of 65 and 45. 85 and 27, the records still stand. 704, 640, sunrise and sunset for the daytime hours of tomorrow. Lively high tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton, 74 degrees, pressure coming in at 29.98 inches of mercury. And we got through the day without seeing any Rainfall 71 now, Wilkes Barre Scranton International Airport, 76 in Mount Pocono, 83 degrees in Allentown, 80 degrees in Williamsport, 77 in Seals Grove, and 82 
in State College. Wind's not much of a factor, averaging 5, maybe up to 10 miles per hour. That's about it. Most of the activity has been upstate New York, the northern tier of Pennsylvania, northwestern PA, out in the Ohio Valley region. Uh, and uh, again, as we head through uh, the overnight hours, I don't think things are shaping up to be too bad. May have to deal with a, uh, a shower around as we go into tomorrow. But other than that, not looking too bad. As we go into our uh, Sunday, I think uh, things shaping up to be a pretty nice looking day, although we'll have a lot of clouds around tomorrow and Sunday. And then those clouds on the increase as we go into uh, Sunday night. And then what ends up happening is this front out here with the rain makes its way toward the east. The remnants of Karen start to make their way up toward the uh, north and east. And the interaction between those systems uh, basically spells the form of an accumulating rain. Could be looking at some heavy rain as we go into our Monday and as we go into our Monday night, even possibly into the first part of uh, Tuesday. Fairly quiet, though, for the most part this weekend. But then things are going to change. As we go into Monday and Monday night and early Tuesday morning, front starts to come through. And then Karen merges with that front, and that could spell some uh, very heavy rain across uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. So how much rain at this point? Eh, still a lot of uh, uncertainties at this point, but I still think uh, uh, most of our area has the potential of seeing a widespread one, two inches of rain, but depending upon the exact location of the front and Karen, we can be looking at as much as two, maybe three, maybe four inches of rain. Not out of the question. Could be some flood watches, could be some flood warnings. So um, we'll just have to play it by ear and see what ends up happening as we go into our uh, Monday, Monday night, and as we go into our Tuesday. 54 to 60 as we go through tonight, mostly cloudy, maybe a shower around, mostly cloudy for tomorrow. A nice day, can't rule out a stray shower, but that's about it. Clouds on the increase for tomorrow night, 55 to 61. More Topic A coming at you after these commercial messages. All Care Home Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice. For your care, call us and we'll be there. Circuit for Women, 1090 Church Street, Hazel Township, a woman's fitness center specifically designed with a variety of fitness options to help you look and feel your best. Featuring a complete 30-minute workout and weight management program that is fun, fast, and safe. Also offering yoga classes and Latin dance combined with circuit strength training. We are affiliated with the Silver Sneakers program. Convenient hours and professional staff to help you reach your goals. Call today for an appointment at 570-453-3180. We build tires, but not tires like anybody else. We build Cooper tires for people, not just cars. For chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and trophy trout fishermen, which is why we've built our new Discoverer AT3 for all traction, all terrain, all the time, performance. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Weatherwood is a privately owned 200-bed nursing and rehabilitation center. Nestled within the quiet town of Weatherly, PA, we offer our residents and their families tranquil and scenic views from just about anywhere in the building. We are located within minutes of Hazleton General Hospital as well as major metropolitan medical and trauma centers in the Lehigh Valley. Whispering Meadows is a 50-bed secured dementia unit within our facility. Whether you need short-term, long-term, or respite stay, call or stop by today for a tour. This week on Wellness 2 Physical Therapy, Ting will bring two of his clients along. Missy and Ted, they're going to tell you about their journey to wellness with a little help from Hazleton Physical Therapy. It's coming up this week. Join us.
right, 524. I think we're here to stay this time now. Okay. If, if, don't, uh, don't if, say that too if we have the clock right. And I came up with this format. I don't remember what goes where. Well, that was my fault because I walked in early. Well, yeah, well, but then there was a computer glitch and everything else. Anyway, we've got a, a ton of things to talk about. And right now, uh, under this format, we've mentioned this uh, early, uh, earlier this week. On Monday, there will be a new Topic A here, hosted by Ann Galley. It begins at 5.30 in the afternoon. Right. And so this is our last one Friday on my for mind. now Friday. anyway under this format. That doesn't mean we can't return in some other format in some other time slot, and I suspect at some point we will. Well, I so. think this is incredible because in one week, television history has been made. You had the Breaking Bad finale at the beginning <laughs> of the week, and now you have the Topic A Live at Five right. weather at the end of the week. And I just basically want to make a public announcement today that I want to thank you and Joe Garbatrick for um, serving on the board of my charitable, founda charitable foundation uh -huh. that I have found it. Okay, and yeah. the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm taking all the money that I made co-hosting. Right. Friday on my mind edition of yeah. Papagay, and I'm turning it into a charitable foundation. Yeah, well. So I just it, wanted to let you know It's not going to have a large dowry, just so you know. That. Well, exactly. Now, <laughs> let's talk about Halloween. You were talking about that story about Halloween. Yes. When you were a kid, yeah. what did you dress up as and at Halloween? Oh, boy. I don't remember. Oh, I, well, I remember being Batman one Batman year. one year? My mother, God rest her soul, okay, she put me in a Captain Kangaroo costume for three years straight. It was sky blue satin. You were in the, college at this time. No, 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 no. I was first through, okay. uh, first through third grade. And finally in the fourth grade, she said, well, are you going to trick or treat this year? And I said, do I have to? I am not that desperate for candy. So I've never been a big Halloween fan. When I was in college, I went to a college party yeah. and I refused to get dressed up. So what I did was I actually went in a suit and I went as an accountant. And a couple of years ago, I worked for a company that it was totally mandatory for us to dress up on Halloween. Really? Yeah. They basically said that you would um, have to take a day off, all right, and you had to take a day off if you didn't get dressed up for Halloween. Oh, I never worked for, for, for one like that. That was that I'm insane. Glad. I, well, we had, yeah. we, we had a couple of 20-somethings who were in charge of the company, and they basically decided it would be fun. So <laughs> what I did was I walked in in a tuxedo, and around my neck, I had a big sign that said, I'm sorry. You know what I went as? Ah, uh, the groom at the top of a wedding cake. A formal apology. That's oh, what I went as. Oh, very close. So I am, not, close. I am not real happy with Halloween. I never liked it. And yeah, I, whatever. Even as a... There you go. There you go. <laughs> For those of you Mr. under Green. 35, this is the Captain Kangaroo theme song. There's Mr. Green Jeans. And, of course, I am wearing green tonight. And you are How wearing. is that? We ought to go buy a lottery ticket tonight. <laughs> this is incredible. This is a synchronicity here at its best. Uh, I don't even want to bring up anything serious at this, this point in this subject. We do have a number of uh, right. serious things exactly. uh, we do want to talk about. But um, I guess we should. Should we break now? How long are we doing this show? This is like we're rookies here. Three years of this, Actually, and I don't know when to break. Okay? Three years and started, I guess, at no. late 2010. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Three years. Uh, for anybody, and again, uh, I mentioned this earlier in the week, but uh, for anybody who uh, missed it, and it was made official today on uh, the one radio station, I am still going to be involved uh, in the production, and we'll be doing occasional interviews and things like that on uh, late edition here. Uh, but uh, I'm headed back to radio. Uh, as of Monday, I am the co-host of The Game Plan, uh, the uh, local sports talk radio show on the new sports talk radio station, 102.3 FM, uh, WHBS, The Sports Hub. It's Joe Thomas and me from noon to 3 every day. Then you'll be hearing me doing news in the afternoon on WILK. And then more coming later on. I'm going to leave it hanging at that. Exactly. <laughs> well, you want to do suspenseful things. You yes. Know, you just yeah, it's like that cliffhanger thing. Cliffhanger, there, exactly. You know. yeah. Exactly. Right. So, um, All right. let me jump to something here of some substance. But I'm going to say what I really wanted to talk to later on. We were talking before, and you had a big post about the emails that, uh, for some reason, the county now has to post every single email, which right. I think is an invasion of privacy. I'm sorry. I think that's going over the top. Uh, and there was one on that apparently a few of the employees, county employees, don't like manager Bob Lawton, and they'd like to get him fired. 
So what? Well, ex- <laughs> I don't see that that being a big deal. My 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 problem with this is that you have to be a little more selective in making every single email public. You know, that type yeah. of thing. And I mean, I'm, I'm all for transparency, but if there's a contract, if there is something going on where um, somebody is uh, talking about a particular project, you want to make sure that those emails are public. But uh, I think this stemmed from a story of a young man who was furloughed or laid off, and he was a temporary employee for a while. They hired another person to take his place. Now, ironically, the person that they hired to take his place was more political than the guy that they let go. The guy that um, was hired was a former Evoca mayor, Jim Haddock, mm-hmm. and the um, person in question who was let go was Art Babuini, who right. served on the staff of Carol Lee Medico and was a big uh, Republican, um, ran, I think, for district justice in the past uh, primary on the Democratic side in both um, yeah, on both ballots in the greater Pittston area. So he may basically made a, made a remark that uh, people were not happy with Bob Lawton. Well, you know, if you're a boss, nobody's going to be happy with you. I was going to say, that, that's, and, and, and the fact that there are county employees who aren't crazy about Lawton isn't exactly breaking news. I mean, you've known that since he's been here. Right. And then what happened was uh, apparently three candidates or two candidates running for county council, Mike Gamber and Kick Heffern and Rich Heffern. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, Bob Weenie called um, uh, Gamber and Heffern called to offer his support. And all of a sudden, Ed Brominski got into the mix. And all of a sudden, now it's a brouhaha that Brominski wants to do a coup and take over the county council. Oh, and th- this type of thing, this is what turns people off about local politics because they don't want to get involved with this minutia. Also... This kind of stuff is not hurting, is not helping the reputation of this council or the charter. If this charter, if there were a repeal put on the ballot now, it would win. Go back to the three commissions. I, I think it would win. I would think so. Yeah, I mean, but I think that you have to give it a chance. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll break and we'll do something when we come back. I'm not sure. It's 5.30 Friday afternoon on WYLN. Stay here. The Beer Garage, 202 East Diamond Avenue in Hazleton. More than just beer. Coffee, all sizes, only $1. Get your lottery tickets here, too. Stop in today in the Beer Garage in Hazleton. Tyrone's Market has been serving the Hazleton area for 70 years with the freshest meats, homemade Italian hot and mild sausage, dried Tyrolean sausage. Try their chicken or beef kebabs and much more. Tyrone's Market, 819 Alter Street, Hazleton. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Plumman's Bakery is the best. We have all Italian foods, pizza, hoagies, and cannoli. Yes, they're all made fresh for you. Booyah, Dills, and Baba Rum, who made me balls, pasta for jewel. Just come in for lunch, we'll serve you quick with Tommen's Italian food. Plumman's Bakery is the best. We have all Italian foods, pizza, hoagies, and cannoli. Yes, they're all made fresh for you. Booyah, Dills, and Baba Rum, who made me balls, pasta for jewel. Just come in for lunch, we'll serve you quick with Tommen's Italian food. If you want the entire story, then you want WYON's Late Edition. More than headlines, more than interviews, it's the whole story. In-depth discussions on hot topics and more. Plus, meteorologist Joe Garbacic gives you the area's most accurate weather report from the WYON Weather Center. Get the whole story on WYON's Late Edition, weeknights at 10 on WYON, where your local network. We go back in time, Pensacola, Florida, back in 1995, and there was a hurricane brewing. In fact, there's a tropical storm brewing now. Her name is Karen, but this was actually a hurricane. Hurricane Opal, it was back in uh, 1995, and uh, it was a pretty good storm from October uh, 6th, and you go back in time through September 27th of 1995. Some people lost their lives. 
did cost a lot of damage. It was very low intensity in terms of pressure, 916 millibars. The lower the pressure, the more intense the storm system is. You compare that with the average pressure, which is 1,013.25. You can see just how low it got, and the winds getting up to 150 miles per hour, which means it did reach Category 4 status. And any time you get a Category 3, a 4, or a 5 on a Saffir-Simpson scale, which ranks hurricanes, those are all considered major hurricanes. So Hurricane Opal was a major hurricane. In fact, that was one of the uh, storms, one of the hurricanes I remember doing a, uh, a big-time report on back when I was in college, Hurricane Opal. Boy, how times change and how times fly by. All right, our daily numbers. We want to thank the Beer Garage for sponsoring them. 984, the big four, 61112. Quinto numbers looking like this, 452, 44, and the treasure hunt numbers, 3, 4, 11, 12, and 17. Another unique location, Iron Mountain, Wyoming. Yeah, snowstorm. Talking about several inches of snow falling out there. At least no snow for our area. There's a couple of showers around, but that's pretty much about it. Temperature-wise right now, 80 degrees in Berwick, 78 in Shenandoah, 79 in Monnoy City, 80 in Bloomsburg, and 80 degrees in Danville. Here's a look at skycast precipitation and clouds. Maybe a shower or an isolated storm through this evening or tonight. And then tomorrow, maybe a stray shower. But again, most locations should be dry. It's going to stay on a mild side of things. And then uh, Sunday, not looking too bad. The clouds will start to roll in. Uh, Sunday night, maybe we'll have to deal with uh, a little bit of some rain or a couple of showers ahead of the front and ahead of the remnants of uh, Karen. But I think the bulk of the rain will be falling Monday into Monday evening, into Monday night, and possibly into the first part of our Tuesday. So if you're traveling next few hours, things looking pretty good out there across our region. Notice 50s to near 60 degrees for tonight. Tomorrow, 70s to lower 80s. Berwick area, Columbia County, seven-day extended forecast looking like this. Pretty nice temperature-wise. Over the next few days, then the rain moves in Monday. I think it'll be lasting into Monday night, possibly the first part of Tuesday. And then as Tuesday progresses, we'll start to see improving conditions and then looking good for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. More Topic A. Right now, we're not taking a break, I don't think. Right? So we we're go coming back, back over here. Is that where hey, we're going? Hey, this is great. Hey, the last this day, is this fun. is awesome. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my heavens. This is the serious thing. Yes. And I take partial responsibility for this yesterday. 24 hours ago today, uh, I was on with, uh, and obviously we didn't have a bureau in Washington, D.C., so I'm trying to take it what some of the other media are saying happened in Washington. So much of it turned out to be wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they said this woman had driven at the gates of the White House firing. Well, it turned out she never got anywhere near the gates of the White House. She hit a barrier a ways away from the White House. It was completely unarmed. Um, I just think they overreacted. I could think of a, a dozen different ways they could have stopped her without having to kill her. Now, she was unarmed. She had a history of mental disorders. She was obviously afraid um, the baby's in the back seat. Now, I know they didn't know that at first. They didn't know it until they killed her and they pulled her body out of the car when they found a baby sleeping in the back. I mentioned this this morning on radio, and I, it's not the same, but it's somewhat akin. About a month and a half ago, there was a chase around here. It started at the Walmart in St. Clair with this guy who stole a bunch of things, jumped on 61, and he's running up 61. Police have an APB out for him. They're looking for him. They tried to pull him over. He refused to pull over. When they got to Mahanoy City, he gets off at 54. He's heading down into town. In front of White Owl Road, they threw, I don't know what they call those, spike strips. Right, so just got all flat tires. The guy, at one point, physically tried to run down an officer, tried to run down a state trooper, intentionally tried to kill him. They shot him in the arm. He otherwise survived, and he's facing charges. Why couldn't D.C. police have done something like that instead of opening up on this woman with, if you read some stories, you're talking 100 rounds fired at her? I think this is way over the top. Well, first off, you have a tragedy to begin with. Uh, her mental state was not 100%, and that's what put her in this position. But when you have two things going on, when you have a high alert in terms of terrorism, when there have been so many 
bombs have across the world where a car or a truck was driven into an area. I think that would put people on high alert. Hasn't and happened here. Uh, it ha- but that's exactly the point. It hasn't happened here, but there was always the first time that it could. So I but cannot with those fall- barriers, you can't get anywhere but close I, to either the White House I or the Capitol. That, You're a quarter I cannot, mile away. But I cannot fault the reaction to the I police. Am. I and am. I, I can't think they fault it mainly because we are living in a panic. Sleep. Well, we're, we're living, living in, in panic. We're we living went way in careful with all consideration this. We went of overboard. other people's safety. We went and I overboard. really think that it's what and I, I, I could agree in the sense that maybe, you know, they could have tried to wing her or wounded her they or shoot whatever. They the tires out on the car. They shoot the radiator so the car overheats. There are a dozen different things you could have done. There's a lot of ways to do it, but also, and I I hesitate to bring this up because I know you're going to go after the races when I do bring it up, but at the same time, we are vulnerable right now because of the government shutdown. And the government shut. Oh, yeah, I, don't think that I really think so. To I think do it has it a all. lot to do with the mindset of the people who were protecting the the uh, the barriers. And uh, I'm sorry that it happened, but I don't think it was an overreaction. Uh, I definitely think it was an overreaction, a big overreaction. And the other thing is, they're saying that they're going to do an internal review. Well, gee, what do you think that's going to say? If nothing else, at least try to have some integrity and call in an outside agency to investigate whether or not there was an overreaction. I mean, if D.C. police investigate D.C. police, gee, what do you think they're going to turn up? Well, I think what you are going to see is, I think you'll be surprised that the review will um, talk about a lot of things that maybe they could have done better. And um, oh yeah, I'd always be, done better. Only but because it's justified. only because the world is going to be watching at this point. I, I I'm sorry that the woman died. I'm sorry that there was a baby in the back. But again, you know, you go to the question: uh, How is our mental health system helping people at this point? Well, you know? that, she and, she had a form of depression. Apparently, listening to her mother, the pregnancy was unplanned, and then she went into some sort of depressive stage and after she, that. And, and she that was a dental was a, hygienist, she and a, her her dentist basically said, "Oh, she seemed fine to me." Yeah. So there's a lot of things going on here. I really, um, I, I, I would I would have wished and hoped that maybe. They would not have um, it killed her, but I could understand the logic behind it. I don't. I don't. I think it was a terrible overreaction. And, you know, uh, we'll see what any kind of reviews – we'll see what uh, any kind of review says. But, again, see, like I said, when you have those three things going on – but, anyway, what were you going to say now? Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing here. We're going we're to wait for Joe to go outside, and then we're going to go outside. Uh, we can talk about the uh, government shutdown, which uh, I was going to mention that I was wrong – and that I assumed it would be over yeah, I by thought it, today. I thought it, it would be over, but so maybe Monday or Tuesday. I don't see this lasting much longer. All right, we'll go to him. Okay, uh, outside in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center, here's Joe G. Joe. Well, thank you very much, L.A. You know what? It is just spectacular outside right now. We have the sunshine, a few clouds around. Of course, we have our uh, little waterfall going, and it gives us the uh, peace and tranquility now, so to speak. Can't get much better weather for the month of October. Do got some changes to talk about in our forecast, the potential of at least some heavy rain coming in our area. I'll let you know when that's going to happen. But before we get to all of that, here's a look at our live 35 Skycast Doppler. There are some showers around and embedded with those showers. There's a couple of thunderstorms, uh, most of them not affecting our immediate WYLN viewing area. But there are a few out there, so we keep that threat of a shower, maybe an isolated storm in our forecast through the rest of this evening. So if you happen to be traveling, it's not going to be too bad out there. It's overall looking pretty nice temperature-wise right now. We're at 74, our live Lehigh tire conditions. Outside our station in Hazleton, pressure coming in at 29.98 inches of mercury. Up in the Wyoming Valley area, temperatures holding in the 70s to lower 80s. 80 in Williamsport, 77 in Seals Grove, 71. Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport. Skycast precipitation and clouds. Overall, this weekend, it's not looking too bad. May have to deal with a shower, isolated storm again through this evening. Maybe a shower as we go into tomorrow. And as we go into our Sunday, not looking too bad. But then Sunday night, the clouds roll in. And then as we start going into our Monday, that's when we have the potential of seeing some of that heavy rain overspreading our area into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, and possibly into the first part of our Tuesday. 54 to 60 as we head through tonight. Tomorrow, 75 to 81. 
Maybe a shower. Clouds on the increase for tomorrow night, 55 to 61. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys at the Vision of Arc Electric. So it's been very quiet weather-wise lately. We have not had any significant weather systems to talk about, but we're going to have one to talk about as we start going into our Monday and Tuesday with some rain. And uh, depending upon the exact track of Karen and where that front sets up and we can be looking at, I think, at, at least at this point, an average of one to two inches of rain. But don't be surprised if we don't get more, possibly two, three, or in excess of that. Definitely can't rule that out whenever you have tropical systems interacting with fronts, as will be happening on Monday. And then uh, Tuesday, the first part of it could still see some leftover rain, but then we start to clear out Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, not looking too bad with temperatures in the lower 60s. We are going to go to break right now, but when we come back, we'll have Yonkai and Tyrone coming up. Swing to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, October 18th at the Alice E. Wilsey Performing Arts Center at the historic Castle in Hazleton. 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of Big Bad Voodoo Daddy's remarkable arrival onto the music scene. And today, the high-energy nine-piece ensemble continues to remind the world that it's still cool to swing big band style. Join the party. Shake and move to the groove October 18th. Why should you visit Penn State Hazleton? Because if you come to our Penn State Day open house, there's no application fee. We have fun. We have the lion. <laughs> we have new scholarship money. Students are scoring internships all over the country. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. And this is your chance to see campus, talk to students, meet professors, and check out everything Penn State has to offer. Penn State Hazleton. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. The Gene Berger Performing Arts Center offers everyone the opportunity to experience the arts in a non-competitive atmosphere of education, exploration, creativity, safety, value, and fun. For 18 seasons, their experienced instructors have offered classes for toddlers through adults in tap, jazz, ballet, hip-hop, modern, gymnastics, and even mommy and me classes. With opportunities presented each season to perform, students are taught the needed fundamentals on which to build a solid dance foundation. Call and sign up for this season's classes today. Hi everybody, this is Richie Molinaro, Marketing Director for Fairway Chevrolet in Hazleton. Since Berwick Chevrolet is no longer an authorized Chevrolet dealer, I'd like to personally invite you to join our Fairway family. We'll provide you with the utmost courtesy from Chevrolet sales, service and parts to our state-of-the-art body shop and auto spot. We have over 300 new and pre-owned vehicles in stock. We're the number one commercial truck and business elite dealer in Pennsylvania and we would be honored to be your Chevrolet dealer. All right, about 5.46 on this uh, Friday afternoon. We were talking about the, uh, the government, shut, shut government shutdown and uh, the mass carnage and destruction of society that has spun from it uh, since it began. Well, the only Not. The average person doesn't even know it's shut down. Well, the average person who is a federal employee is basically unemployed right now. I know a couple of well, people who work for that. Well, I agree with federal employees, yeah. but I'm saying the average person in society right now is not noticing the difference. Well, you, um, the carnage, here's where the carnage is going to be. The carnage is going to be with the Republican Party because these guys are shutting down this government. And when services start getting interrupted, you're going to see this. And all because they are going after a health care bill that was upheld by yeah, the Supreme yeah, Court yeah, yeah, and yeah, also yeah. passed in the House of Congress. Didn't you and say in 96 there was going to be mass slaughter? The Republicans I never said get that. killed because they didn't get killed. They picked up two seats in the Senate and they lost eight House seats, which was a rather small loss. And Bill Clinton got himself an intern, so and, that was well, not a bad Bill Clinton <laughs> also became a Republican after that. Uh, he's, he agreed to welfare reform and all these other well, things. Well, first of all, Bill Clinton was a conservative Democrat. And, he was a moderate Democrat. He was a moderate, I, I moderate Democrat. That. Yeah. So I that. he was going to move to that. He but did a fairly decent job as president. I disagreed with him in a lot but of areas, you, but overall he did a fairly decent job. But with the government shutdown, basically these guys are overplaying their hands, and you are going to see some political consequences that are going to not be good for the Republican I Party. I disagree. Because I don't people think are that. signing up for this thing. They had a couple of glitches yesterday when the thing the first started. Two days, right? They had a lot of The first of glitches. two days, right? But people are signing up up for this thing. Why did the website crash? Because people want this program. People want... Blue Cross is running an ad 
saying, come to our website and you might be able to get a government subsidy by getting Blue Cross. Yeah. So this program is going to be wildly success- successful. And for these guys to try to shut this down um, on, on just because of they don't agree with Obamacare, that's crazy. Uh, I, I, and, I, and first of all, you're, people, overst- you're overstating. People thinking, p- normal people thinking, people thinking, are going to think. You are way overstating the success of this program. There was a lot of curiosity hits. But, In New York State, I think there were six policies sold. But California claimed five million hits. When the Los Angeles Times really looked at the Don't, number, it was 640,000. It was let's, nowhere let's, near what they claimed. No, no. Let's not worry about hits. Let's just get, get enrollees. That's going to be the true right test. right now, nationwide, we have about 150. Right, but you're going to... Yeah, no, you, what, what don't, you, you don't. You yes. don't have 150. There's going to be 12 more. in New York State. All I am telling you is that when this thing hits, it is going to be... You're going to see better results. Don't talk about projections. Good Lord. And when you're talking about, like, hits, right... Every, I, I talk to many bloggers. How many hits do you have? 100,000. You don't. I, I, I that's mean, my point. That was my point about bringing up the hits. Just because you've got a lot of curiosity secrets. It doesn't mean you have – and a lot of them, some of them are moles done by the administration. Well, hit, hit, you, hit, hit, you, drive the numbers up. And how do you know that? I mean, how do you know that? website – does that? I don't do that. Well, okay, you're one of. The I people. don't. I don't. It's a, like a smoking. Pe- it's too much work. I, love it. I mean, really. A lot of people do that. They'll hit them over and over again. To make All I'm going to say is, you're going to see a better success. And for these guys to try to fight this, it's incredible. Prediction. Ted Cruz, his own party prediction. This will be such a mess that in 2016, whoever the Democrat nominee is. For president in 2016, and I'm not convinced it's going to be Hillary Clinton, but whoever it is, is going to be talking about strengthening the affordable health care plan by proposing what amounts to a de facto repeal and replacement of something. No, you're not going to see that at all. Strengthening. Uh -uh, Not at all. All right, I'm I'm getting yelled at in my ear here that you and Moran have apparently conspired against me here. No, we haven't. in, in, In something. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? We're looking right at now a couple we're looking of at two pictures. ugly middle-aged guys on TV. But <laughs> okay, we're we're looking at uh, what we've talked about in the last couple of years. Yeah, and of course uh, we talked during the last. Um, you voted for election. the guy on the right. I voted for the guy on the left. Right, exactly, and we talked about that throughout the entire year. And that was supposed to be the top story of the year. Yeah. But then, of course, Sandy Hook happened. Right. And then after that, we decided not to talk about that. Uh, of course, this is health care reform. How many times have we been talking about health care reform? She's not a nurse. She's a stripper. She's from the candy club. How do you know uh, that? So was, yeah, you know at, that about you? Know, I, I've never seen her before I, I, in my life. Well, how often do you frequent strip clubs? The last time I was at a strip club was in 1991. More recent, and it was the day that more recent uh, than I. Mine was about nineteen eighty. It was the day that Mario. It was the day that Mario Cuomo decided he wasn't going to run for president. Everybody else is like (laughs) watching the girls, and I'm looking up at the TV. Wow, Cuomo's not running for president. And the bartender looked at me and said, "Why don't you just get out?" (laughs) So, but anyway, yeah, okay, this. Wardrobe, right? Okay, this was the day of the green pants day. Yes, I do remember and that. And we decided to, wear, well, I decided to, wear, I told you to wear your green pants. Yeah. Because when I came back from sick leave, right, right. Um, you were wearing green pants and my wife drove me up here. And I said, uh, you know, I got a pair of green pants, but don't tell her because, like, she's going to be appalled. But we wore them uh, together on that same you ne- day. You, you never told her the difference and what you paid for yours oh, no. versus what oh, I paid God for mine. Oh, almighty, <laughs> okay. no. All right, that's good. No, no, there's a difference that's between... We avoided, uh, we there's avoided a difference divorce between, court there. There's a difference between Tommy Hilfiger and eBay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. This was, I think, one of the that's jackets. That's my smoking jacket. Yeah, and you. Uh, I still have that. And that's from who? The uh, that, that Shah is, of uh, Russia. No, or, no. It, it it is a replica of, of one that Tsar Nicholas had before the Bolsheviks took him up to Ekaterinburg and shot him. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I would be careful wearing that. And then there's another one. This was, I think, your grandmother's tablecloth. Yeah. From yeah, Italy. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, we had it made into a jacket, and uh, that was the day that Moran was flashing wardrobe malfunction on the screen and as when I wore that. that jacket. And I wear that every once in a while for kicks, and it generally gets a reaction. Uh, much of that reaction is not airable at this time slot of the day. but uh, And then, of course, there was a the time that they put me on a bill. That is accepted in any strip club in Pennsylvania. Exactly. But, <laughs> but, but 
Mario Cuomo has to be on the TV in order to redeem That's him. probably not going to happen anytime soon. Or Although Andrew, Andrew Cuomo. Cuomo. We can do be, Andrew right, Cuomo. Yeah. Okay. And that's about it. Okay. <laughs> I had a couple of other things, too. I had, I had um, a picture of garbage because we have always talked about garbage. Okay, and um, our house, uh, our little garbage bag, and the King students. Oh next yeah, door, we do talk about like, that a lot because Wilkes-Barre like, collects um, garbage with bags. common sense. Exactly. Hazelton does it stupidly. So. Well, and so does Scranton. Yeah. By the way, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. By the way, real quick, um, David Wenzel, the former mayor of Scranton, endorsed the Republican candidate who's running for mayor. Uh, that McGuire guy that's running. No, that's uh, um, McGill. McGill. Yeah. McGill. Right. So they yeah. they endorsed him. That'll so help. That's just a little bit of news on there for the. All other right. Guy. I guess we are done. You and right. I have been friends for a very long time since 1980, and we fought and argued about everything. It was a hoot. It was a great time having you here every Friday. We may be done at this go round, but I have the suspicion that you and I are going to be doing something like this somewhere along the line in the future on TV or radio or back here again or something. As long as it's not, not as long as it's not in Allenwood, you know that's all. I'm fine with that. <laughs> all right, Joe, come back and wrap it up. Stay here. It's Topic A on WILA. I've got three great deals for you. Here's a 2013 Mazda 3i Sports Sedan, just $187 a month, sign and drive. Or this 2014 Mazda 6 Sky Active, 38 miles per gallon, $245 a month, sign and drive. Or this great 2014 Mazda CX-5 Sky Active, just $299 a month, sign and drive. Plus, we'll give you more for your trade. Burger Mazda, just off exit 145 off ID1, Route 93, Hazleton. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated at 542 North Wyoming Street in Hazleton, serving the greater Hazleton area since 1890 and still family owned and operated, offers convenient parking, handicapped accessibility, seating for over 150 people, casket, cremation, product showrooms to accommodate traditional cremation and pre-planned funerals. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated, 570-454-3341. A winning smile. It's not the secret to success, but it sure helps. Protect your smile by visiting Dr. Weiss for complete dental services. Dr. Weiss offers a full-service denture laboratory on premises, offering dentures in one day. Three dentists, four hygienists, and a team of caring technicians and assistants specializing in quality dentures and repairs, complete general dentistry, extractions, cleaning, and caps. Dr. Weiss, where you can have new dentures in one day. Managing risk is more than just buying an insurance policy. At Dreyfus, our approach is different. We have 25 risk management professionals who have the tools and experience to help our clients avoid and survive unexpected events. We can help you with risk transfer, OSHA requirements, safe workplace, cybersecurity, and claims management. All of these go well beyond an insurance policy. We're also independent, so we can access dozens of insurance carriers like Grange Insurance, who can insure your auto, home, business, and life. Dreyfus Insurance since 1901 and Grange Insurance since 1935. We're committed to helping you manage risk. All right, we're sitting in at 73 outside our station in Hazleton, 76 in Mount Pocono, 71 Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport, 80 in Williamsport, 77 out there in the central part of the state. All right, well, we got some uh, showers out there, got a couple of thunderstorms embedded within those showers, making our way toward the east, so we may have to deal with a shower or the possibility of an isolated storm, but again, nothing too significant to worry about. And as we go into the weekend, for the most part, not bad. Maybe a shower around for tomorrow. And then Sunday night, the clouds will be on the increase. And then after that, well, looks like we're going to have to deal with uh, some rain. 54 to 60 as we go through tonight. 75 to 81 for tomorrow. 55 to 61 heading into tomorrow night. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys, a division of Arc Electric. So here's what we got over the next uh, couple of days. Well... We could call it the calm before the storm system as we start going into our uh, Sunday night and as we go into our uh, Monday. Then we have the potential of some heavy rain affecting our area. And that'll get out of here by Tuesday morning. And then the rest of the week uh, shaping up to be pretty nice. So i, I got to say it's, 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 it's been a nice run. Thank you. Thank it you very much. Has. It indeed has been. Uh, and thank you. That goes for everybody here. Uh, oh, I didn't expect this. <laughs> No, I didn't. You know how I am with uh, with this stuff. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you uh, for the uh, last, uh, with this group, I guess we're about 
three and a half, almost four years. Overall, five and a half years here at uh, WYLN. I've had the, uh, the chance to work with some wonderful people, very talented people who have uh, really given uh, their all. And uh, I said this publicly off the air. I'm going to say it publicly on air. Uh, when we decided that we were going to go for a market-wide presence, the fact that a Hazleton station would be even considered in the same ball game with WNEP and WBRE was from another planet. Well, we did it. And um, I credit all of you. I thank all of you. And you made the last five and a half years here really terrific. Uh, and again, I'm not going completely. I'm still going to be here uh, just about every we night of the week. So it's not you. like I'm, 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 I'm disappearing no uh, for good. But uh, thank you all very much. And all of you who are watching, thank you very much. For, thank you for all the, uh, the responses we got over the years, uh, the good and even the bad ones. And say, Tyrone, you're a jerk. Uh, I mean, at least it means that you were paying attention and, and, we, uh, and, and you got something out of uh, what we did and uh, what we said here. So, uh, again, um, we're not going far and uh, we'll still be around. And all of you oh, think, all right, let me do it this way you can, so you can see exactly. That's, it's not going to. Okay. If we indict we, more we judges, like you could come back. <laughs> there you go. Well, you are the one who did all our judge indictment stories. Well, yeah, matter, but, but you let me do it. So, <laughs> you know, and these, these women here were on the scene, too. So all we have to do, we'll do that. And we'll, it's a plan. It's a conspiracy. You can do it. It ain't bragging. See ya. On this episode of Off the Beat Path, we take a look at an ancient form of martial arts, throw tomatoes at hundreds of people in Pittston, learn about the game of fingers, and Chris looks at some classic cars. Pennsylvania is filled with interesting things. You just need to know where to look. Come with us right now as we go Off the Beaten Path. Welcome, everybody, to another awesome episode of Off the Beaten Path. This is season number five. Can you imagine that? Season number five already. It was just a few years ago when we were younger when we started the show. Yeah, I was like this big when we first started Tiny. doing the show. Very, and very I was small. Thinner. And I, I don't know if you've noticed over the years, Jeff and I are both Italian. We talk with our hands. In fact, you just struck me in the take before this. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Italian culture.